Hey guys, welcome back or welcome if it's your first time joining us here at Matthews Motorsports. Today we're going to be taking a break from the Corvette and we're going to be rebuilding this transmission out of my buddy's truck. It's a 68 RFE from a 2009 Ram 2500. So this video we're just going to tear it down and then the next video we'll be actually rebuilding it. I've already got my clutches soaking. They've been soaking for about an hour. It is a balmy 28 degrees here in Georgia today. I've had the heat on in the shop for two and a half, three hours. So great, we're hovering right around 40 degrees in the shop. And my bones ain't like it. It's not awesome. So we got the trans up on the table. Got a couple tools ready. We're gonna bust this thing apart real quick and see what we're working with. First things first, need to take your speed sensors out. They're the same sensor front and rear. So when you go to put it back together, when you go to put it back together, it doesn't matter which one goes where. Now these are Hall Effect sensors, so they're magnets. So when you pull it out like this one, and you've got metal stuck to it, that's probably not a great sign of a healthy transmission. This one's clean, it's all right. So normally I would completely degrease and clean the crap out of this transmission before I pulled it apart. But as I mentioned earlier, it's a whole 28 degrees outside and I'm not about that life. I'm pretty sure it's already drained so it shouldn't dump a thousand gallons of fluid out. So that'd be cool. Luckily, the guy was kind enough to drain it before he brought it. And he only left me two bolts in the valve body. So that saves us some time on this assembly here. Yeah, he said he was going to change the filter and the oil, and he had metal in the pan. Jesus. Sorry. God. Alright, so we got a real heavy deep ATS trans pan. I believe the torque converter is an ATS triple disc as well. And would you believe that it only weighs like 4,000 pounds? Let's pull it out of the way. I really like using a drywall knife to scrape my fluid. But if you use a squeegee, although squeegees work great, they don't hold up to transmission fluid. And this stuff will swell the rubber in most seals and gaskets. And most squeegees are not exactly of the highest quality as it is. Up next, we're going to break out our T25 and knock this filter off. This transmission has been rebuilt before. I know somebody's been in it. It supposedly already has an upgraded valve body and a lot of parts. But it has very, very low miles. I should not be having to go through this trans right now. We take our 8mm and we break off the six or seven bolts actually hold the valve body on but when we take this thing apart later there is a plethora every single all right so that one was tight like three of the seven bolts that hold the valve body to the case were barely more than finger tight and on these, the valve body has to be torqued to spec because there's little rubber grommets that actually interface with the drums and that's where the transmission gets its line pressure to actually apply the clutches. Love that. Let's see what we're working with. So, rebuilt transmission. They didn't change the gasket on the pack connector. Doesn't look like they changed the grommets on the valve body. So these little black donuts here 
I'll have to zoom you in, are what actually apply the clutches. A lot of metal. It has the upgraded Transgo stack cover here. So that's all right. Strain this thing real quick. So that's out of the way. Let's get this screw on filter off and see if it has the billet piece. Hopefully it does. We're actually going to be reusing these filters because they're brand, brand new. He just put them on before he found the metal in the pan. So, going to be nice and ginger careful. Try not to dent or mess them up. Plastic. Just a real quick word of advice, guys. Number one rule of hydraulics. Oil your O-rings. Now we get to take the pump cover off. This guy. So you've got a snap ring that holds it in. And your number one tool for a transmission rebuild is going to be a good screwdriver. It's crazy, but it is what it is. Now all my snap rings, every snap ring for the transmission goes on the trouble tree. So I can keep up with them and keep them in order and know which one goes where. I hate, absolutely hate, the design of this front pump cover because you don't have access really from the back to be able to press it out and it just kind of presses in and gets held in by that snap ring. So we very, very carefully come through with a screwdriver and just barely get it started without deforming the metal. It's, this is a pain in the ass and I can't stand these things. This one's actually moving pretty easy. Which means they probably didn't replace the O-ring when they did the rebuild. Alright, so that's off. Nice and clean. Go ahead and pull this O-ring off and get it in the trash because we actually replace that. Place every O-ring, every seal, every gasket. We're going to be changing that front pump cover uh, bushing as well. So now we've got our pump exposed. You know what? Let me lower you down. Can you see any better now? So now we've got our pump exposed. It's held on by, I want to say, six 10 millimeter bolts. Pretty quick and easy to get off. Oh, oh, there's chunks. The second that I pulled it, stuff started falling. Oh, no. Well, the seals are all there. That's a start, I guess. Well, after you've got the pump out, next up is the input drum assembly. Just very carefully pull it out. And this transmission actually has an upgraded Sonax drum. That's really nice but I don't think it's nice enough to keep it together. That is, that's melted, that almost looks like weld. You're probably not going to be able to see it, I don't know if it'll focus. But that almost looks like broken weld. I don't know what that is. You don't want to find that disassembling your transmission. Oh boy. Well, while we're here, we'll go ahead and break down this drum and see if that little chunk of crap came out of here. Stand. Okay. Make your trusty flat blade. Remember what I said, snap rings go on in order. So 
The reaction plate is very tight on these splines, which is okay. A little tighter than usual. A lot tighter than usual. Wow. I'm really hoping there's not any real internal damage on this transmission. Reaction plate looks okay, but there is there is no clutch material left on these at all. These are completely ruined. They're dished up, they're cupped, completely ruined. Wow. The face of this plate is a little scarred up, but it's not the worst thing in the world. Nothing a little sanding disc. Very, very light sanding won't take out. It's the first time I've taken apart one of these Sonax drums. It's interesting to see how it is. Really got to get a better way to hold these things. Matter of fact, I have an idea. I'll be right back. As I was saying, I have an idea. I'll be right back. Check that out. So in lieu of drilling a hole in my table, I set the torque converter up and put the input drum in the torque converter because that's where it goes. In the transmission, it interfaces. Jesus. Well, those are just... Those are way too tight. I'd be willing to bet those want about half the torque that they were put in with. If your hard black ox bolt feels like it's yielding, you're over torquing it. Like that, right? Un believable. Now mind you, I am not a professional transmission builder, but I have built quite a few and had pretty good success. One thing I've not ever done is just willfully over torqued itty bitty little what is that m4 m6 bolts itty bitty little bastards and i'm having to reef on these things to get them to come out these are black ox socket heads they're a pretty nice fastener but you can only get these little things so tight so we got one that's rounded two that's rounded three that are locked into that drum. Oh, no. Well, we got one of them. Straighten the bin. Man, we got so lucky. 
I was able to hammer in a T27 and get it to come up. They got very, very lucky. Just the coating is scraped up on the inside. It's crazy. Just a shim. All right, so here's your underdrive or your overdrive. I don't know. These all actually look really good. Really, really good. Yeah, these are these are still really nice. Awesome. I'm not sure I'm sold on this whole Sonax ring here. Reaction plate. Yeah, the clutches are coming out really nice. If they were installed correctly, maybe. Way too big a tolerance is in this, to the extent that it almost looks like it's missing clutches. This would be the reason your truck won't drive, Zach. Here's your problem, buddy. Transmission's not even burned up. Now, that front clutch pack was completely boogered, completely destroyed, but these, I mean, they're brand new. The transmission was very, very recently rebuilt. There's no reason for it to be on the ground, torn apart, all this that we're having to do right now should not be a thing, but while we're here, we're going to go ahead and replace all the pistons. We reuse or we don't reuse pistons on any transmissions. Got my Icon snap ring pliers. Best that the horrible fright has to offer. But I'm going to tell you something. Of all the Icon tools that I have bought so far, I have been pretty impressed. Because a lot of the snap rings in this transmission are pretty serious. And I have not bent, broken, anything, any of these snap ring pliers yet. I'm sure that'll change. But as of now, I'm pretty happy. I don't remember if this one's tapered or not, but there are some tapered snap rings in these transmission that look. I mean, why would you go through the trouble of rebuilding a transmission, running a triple disc, running a shift kit, running this big expensive ass Sonax drum, and reuse your pistons? It makes no sense. Come on, guys. Looks fine. piston actually looks okay. Straighten the bin. We're going to pull the input shaft real quick and just make sure that there's nothing in there. And we're going to blow out this orifice tube as well. Sometimes you just got to give them a little pop, free them out of their housing. Just like that. See how we go now. Well, now what? This little hog ring is kind of a pain in the dick. It's got to come off. Okay. And we can pull the input drum from the input shaft. 
No trash on the inside. Got the drum and everything off of the input shaft. Now we're going to get this snap ring out. If for some reason you do decide to do this at home, guys, be careful. These snap rings will bite the shit out of you if you're not careful. And I mean, it's not fun. When it does snap back down, it will tear you up. So, got our spring. Gonna get this piston down. This, this transmission right here, I mean, it is just, she don't want to go. There it is. All right. There's the input of, or the inside of our Sonax drum. Let's pull this seal out. And the number one piece of advice that I can give anybody, if you're doing a transmission, do not use the red shop towels. They will wreak havoc and destroy the inside of a transmission. So the seal is just completely, completely ruined on this thing. I don't get it. I don't get it. I'll just make a bigger mess on the table. Sure, that's fine. So we've got a second ring in here. Ruined. So I said this is going to be a teardown video, so I'll put all this to the side for now. We'll get all this cleaned up. And then on the next video, we will actually start rebuilding all of this. We're going to pull next section out. Once you get these things started, they're really not that bad. It's just getting them started. So from what I understand, this truck has got some goodies. It's got a second gen turbo swap. It's a 67 Cummins, probably a 08 or 09 model. And he's got turbo upgraded and a tune and you know all that, all the normal stuff. Um, he uses it to pull his boat and his race cars and shit like that. So this transmission really, with the parts that are in it, should be more than adequate to do that. Because I assume the truck probably only makes 500 horsepower when he's got it up on kill. I mean, my truck makes five to 600, somewhere in there and my rebuild is a basic stock rebuild with added line pressure and a trans tune and it holds it no problem no matter what I'm doing Ginger carefully convinced this dude to come out like that Let's get in here and see what we're working with. Remember, snap rings in order on the tree. Okay, reaction plate. That clutch is worn pretty badly. Also worn really badly. Yeah. This was not a happy transmission. Not happy at all. So this spring pack here is under pressure, but it's not that bad. See? I've made a tool that I'll show you later to compress that. I don't subscribe to buying every tool that the rape van wants to sell you or anybody else. So this piston can come out now. It actually does look like this one was replaced. Now we get the snap ring off the outside. 
This is one of my least favorite snap rings on the whole transmission because it's very tricky to get started. But just like with the rest, once it's started, it's not that bad. Okay. This is just a dished spring plate that I, for whatever reason, can't remember the name of right now. We have another piston in here. Or rather, a, a retainer. I think this is ready to come out. Yep, just like that. So it doesn't have that nice sharp edge going around the outside here. Leads me to believe that this was reused as well. But it's hard to say because it's very clean and dry on the inside. So normally I rebuild these as I go. I don't typically... Jesus. I don't typically take it all the way apart piece by piece by piece before I start replacing parts. I usually rebuild them in sections as I go and then all I have to do is put the thing back together. Uh, sun gear and planetaries look nice. No slop, no play, no noise. We'll be able to reuse those as you normally can. Action plate, worn clutch, bad. Well, the steel's fine, but the clutches are just destroyed in this thing. The camera's probably not going to see it, but I mean, these clutches have very, very low miles, and there's just no grooves left in them at all. They're just, just, just ruined. I think I've got all new steels. We're going to save them just. Yeah, I've got all new steels. I don't think we're going to reuse any of that. Not going to reuse any of that at all. Alright, let's get this thing turned around and break the tail housing off. So, Thor himself put this tail housing on. Now that we got the tail housing off, you'll see we've got to get this ring off. Then we can pull the last output drum from the inside of the transmission. So as I've gone through, I've noticed that most of the, all of the brass bushings look like they're in really good shape. Thank God. So that's free. Get this wheel off of here. Maybe. So this wheel is your your park, what your park paw interacts with. And that's what keeps the truck from rolling when it's in park. Non-directional, doesn't matter. Goes in or out either way. Spin back around, pull the output drum, see what we're working with here. Sun gear looks nice and smooth. Bushing looks to have been replaced. Bearing spins very freely. This goes back together. 
Double check this planetary gearing. Gears are nice and smooth. So the front half and the back half of the transmission use different bearings, but the thrust bearings are the same in the back half and the thrust bearings are all the same in the front half. The bearings in the back are all black and they're a different size than the ones in the front. So don't freak out if you got all your bearings in a pile and you don't know which goes where. Is it black? Well, it goes in the back. So we'll get all of our suns and planets stacked back together. This dude back on. Now that we know that that's all okay. And this doesn't come back apart. This is a done completed unit that I'm happy to reuse. But I guess I should say <clears throat> All the bearings in the back are not identical, but if it's black, it goes in the back. If it's silver, it goes in the front. It's just an easy way to know which is which. Get the last clutch stack out. Make sure it's healthy. Or assess the damage, whichever comes first. But we have to change how it's set up real quick. So for tearing apart the rear section, and also for rebuilding, and actually assembling the full stack when I put it all together. I take the 68 RFE case and I set it on this shell of a 47 RH case because it's already got a pilot hole in it for an output shaft and it really works well and it's nice and stable. I'll grab this guy, set it right here. Just like that. Now my holes line up and it's at a good working height. I like to kick it over to the table just so that I can push against it if I need to and it doesn't go anywhere. I'm going to jump down in here we're going to pull out this last snap ring. You'll forgive me for the camera angles, but we're just pulling a snap ring. This is not 100% a how-to video. If you want one of those, go check out Hiram at the Automatic Transmission Channel. He does a really, really great job of outlining how to rebuild one of these units. There's our output drum. See what we're working with. Kind of damage and secrets this guy holds. So, so far, we've only really found one clutch stack that was completely destroyed. The rest of them just had a lot of fantastic, uh, just abnormal wear for the lifespan of the transmission. Let's see what this guy looks like. I mean, all these look great. Those. That's what you want your clutches to look like. If this was my personal truck, I would reuse these. I would put this right back in the transmission and send it on its way after I change this piston. But it's not my truck and that's not what I do to customers. Every customer build, get all new parts all the way through. The only thing that I'll reuse is the planetaries. And I have absolutely no problem whatsoever with reusing uh, bushings if they look like they're in good shape. So this is a retaining spring for this piston. There is a two-piece collar. See if I can get you an angle where you can actually see what we're working with here. Can you see the split right there? There's a two-piece collar that retains this. This is the biggest pain in the ass rebuilding this transmission. Everything else is really straightforward. So for this operation, I've got a piece of six inch thick wall pipe. I set it down in here and you kind of want to get it centered so you don't deform this spring at all. 
especially because I don't have a hydraulic press or anything fancy like that. I'm just a dumb redneck, so I get to use Bessie clamps and the edge of my table, and it's never let me down yet. Now in other transmissions, there's other options. You can use a car lift to set it down for some, and you know, it really is application dependent. But all you got to do is depress this thing a little bit. It doesn't take much. And once it starts to drop down, that collar can move freely. You get it down just low enough on that piston and that collar will click out of there. If you can get your stupid sausage fingers in the hole. There's your two-piece ring. It is stepped. It has a step on the inside that interfaces with the race on the transmission. And the larger step on the outside is what actually holds that spring in. And when you depress that spring, it relieves the pressure off this and it's able to slide out. Trash. It's so hard to show, but I can see that the seals are worn, just not in great shape. So there's our teardown of the output drum, the removal of the spring, kind of a quick how-to. I am not the end-all be-all of how to do any of this. But I know that I've built transmissions that work and that last. So we're going to move on. We're going to tear apart the valve body and the pump. And then that will be the end of this video. And then I'll start rebuilding. Okay, we're going to get into the pump now. See what we're working with. These are T30s. There are five. They shouldn't be terribly tight. And you flip the pump, and you've got 4 million T25 to take out. Ten minutes later, pull the separator plate with the gears. Dump this guy. So it's already got the upgraded PR valves and TC uh, torque converter limit switches. So the pump valve system looks okay. This is the older, si older style 68. It does have the two fasteners for the pump separator plate. The later models do not have these two bolts. Now there's two things to do here. We're going to pull the gears. We're going to inspect for wear. Uh, gears look to be in good shape. None of the tangs are, none of the teeth are damaged or chewed up. Still got a nice machine finish. I'm happy to reuse those. That I failed to do the first time that I had my transmission apart when I initially installed my shift kit, when I installed my limit switch and my pressure relief spring and everything, there is a shuttle valve right here. This is simply just a little flapper. Take that out if you're using the Transco kit. The instructions mention it, but they don't say explicitly to do that. So this little mushroom piece right here, what it does is it determines whether one side of the pump is actually pumping fluid through the transmission or if it's actually using the fluid circulated by both pumps. So ditch this. You don't need it if you're using the Transgo shift kit. And that may be synonymous along all of them, but this taking this out will reduce your overall trans temps and just keep fluid flowing at all times. Goodbye. So the pump I'm happy with, we'll set all of this aside, that's ready to be rebuilt and reassembled. 
Next, we're going to get into the valve body. So you've got three of these rubber grommets. These are what transmit fluid to your clutch packs. If these are not reused, or if these are not new, and if this valve body is not torqued to spec to the case, you will have line pressure, pressure loss. You will not get full engagement of your clutches, and it will not do what you want it to do. There's a gasket that goes around the plug for the solenoid pack. I do not have a test bench where I can test the solenoid pack. Ideally, we would have replaced this. Customer didn't want to at this point, but this is easy enough to replace down the road and relatively affordable to do so. Not a huge deal, but make sure you replace this gasket or your shit's going to leak. We got all the bolts loosened and go through and pull them out. There are a lot. Surprisingly, these all seemed to be about the right torque to remove. <clears throat> it is very, very, very important to torque this plate and this valve body to the case of the transmission. There are a lot of things that you can get away with just snugging up or tightening and getting them to about where they need to be. But it's very important that this gets torqued properly. So let's get this thing pulled apart and see what we're looking like. So we're going to pull the gasket. Well, we'll just go ahead and pull the divider plate and that'll tell us what kit so that's the thick single divider plate so that lets me know that it's got the transgo HPE 7B whatever whatever kit that transgo has for the tuneless trans shifting it's what I've got in my truck it works pretty well one two three four five six seven all the check balls are where they're supposed to be it is no longer 20 degrees outside which is awesome pull this gasket off the solenoid pack so we're nice and clean in there everything looks good so we'll get this cleaned up put this back together matter of fact before we do that We'll go ahead and change the seals on all the pistons. So we've got two, three, four, five, six, six or seven T25s along the side. So that's going to wrap up our teardown and inspection of this 68 RFE. So we found a bunch of hokey stuff that I don't like. A lot of just poor assembly, uh, some, some worn parts, and just some bad overall practices. So in the next video, we're gonna rebuild this and I'll show you the way that I do it. It may not be the best way to do it. It may not be perfect, but I follow my torque specs and I've, I've done several of these and had good luck every time. So. Check back in when that video posts. Do me a favor, give me a like, share, and a subscribe if you like the content. Like I've said in the previous videos, this is going to be a very, very varied channel. Several different things going on. So, I appreciate all the views I've gotten so far. Thanks, guys.